Let's talk about files. Once again, another really simple tool. Uh, basically, you have a piece of metal with a lot of sharp little teeth or blades on them. And you use them to shave off material. It can be wood, metal, plastic, really anything. There aren't a whole lot of parts to a file. You have the tang, which is this tapered part right here. And then you have the rest of the file, like the blade. Some files will have a safe face or a safe side where there are no teeth. I don't have one of those, but basically files will have a safe side or a safe face so that you can file one, one part of a workpiece and have the safe face run across that workpiece as well and you don't have to worry about shaving off material that you don't want to shape off. A lot of files will also have handles. Older files don't come with handles, but it is really important to put a handle on a file because these tangs are pretty sharp and putting on a handle is as simple as drilling a hole in a golf ball and pounding it onto the file. It's really not that hard to do. Now I have a couple different kinds of files. The file names are pretty easy to remember. Uh, but before we get into the types of files, let's talk about the types of cuts. Right here I have a double cut file. There are two sets of teeth. You can see the first set starts right here. The second set starts right here. And you have this crosshatch pattern, which is very effective at taking away or hogging off a lot of material. The other type, ah oh man. Oh, I was wrong. The other type of tooth cut, if you want to call it that, is a, a mill cut where instead of having two sets of teeth, you just have one set. Um, and basically, if the entire file were to just look like this right here before we get into the crosshatch, that would be a mill cut. And you'd use a mill cut file to get a smoother surface on your workpiece. Now I'll get into the names. Uh, like I said earlier, they are pretty easy to remember because they have to do with what the file looks like. So this right here is called the half round file because it is half flat, half round. This is called a square file because it's square. We got a triangular file here, a round file here. And honestly, I forgot what this one's called. I'll put a caption right here. When it comes to using a file, generally you'll use two hands and apply an even pressure both on your right and left hand, forward and backward, however you want to think of it. And uh, you'll use nice long strokes only going in one direction. <laughs> Now you'll notice that I'll take one stroke, I'll pick the file up and set it back down. And here's why I do that. If I were to scrape the file on the way back against my workpiece, all those little teeth, whenever I would, whenever I would scrape the file on the back stroke, it would round those teeth out with time. So you can, of course, go back and forth all day however your files might not stay sharp very long and as far as I know there's no way to sharpen a file uh, you just need to buy a new one so main main point here is to uh, only use your file in one direction so it, it is pretty self-explanatory when it comes to what file to use where uh, if you need to file a certain shape you use that shape of file so if I wanted to round out this hole, I'd use a round file. But here is a quick tip. Say I wanted to make a round indent in here. It's going to be pretty hard for me to start that and stay consistent with a round file because it's going to want to wander off. So what you can do is take a triangular file or a hacksaw, anything with a more 
uh, that has more pointed and direct teeth and I'll saw a notch in there first. Then I'll take my round file and make sure that it stays in that notch. Now, if you're cutting soft metal or you're cutting wood with a metal file, which you can do, it's just not always the, the right thing to do, the teeth of your file will get clogged up and there's a really simple fix to that. Some people swear by coating your file in like sidewalk chalk. I've never done that and I, I don't know if I will. Um, what I will do is take a wire brush this is a real cheap one and scrape the teeth out with a wire brush and if you for some reason can't find one uh, you can also use a grill scraper um, works just as well it's just a little bit less aggressive the only rule I try to follow when storing files is to make sure that they aren't touching each other or clacking into each other, uh, that'll just damage the teeth and the files won't last as long. So some methods that I use to hang up files involve a key rack that I made when I was in Cub Scouts that my parents never used and I'm only a little bit hurt about that but I use it now to hold files so everything's good. Another method is to use nails and I'll give you guys a close up as to what that looks like. So I, I really don't even know what these things are. Maybe bent nails. I, yeah, I have no idea. Um, either way, I'll just toss the handle on each hook and we're good to go. Now for the files that I have a golf ball handle on, they can just sit in between two nails and I've never had a problem with that. I think that's about it. The main takeaways, don't scrape a file on the backstroke. Don't let them hit each other. Files are really brittle, so don't break them. Um, and even if you do break them, uh, you can always make them into something cool. Files are made out of pretty quality steel, so you can make some cool bladed objects with files. I think that's it. If you guys have any questions about files, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them.